What's up, my Carcomaniacs out there? This is Carcabo, the Forger of Pain! And... Um, and welcome to Carcamo Gate. Well, I was gonna say Panama City, but this is not the city. And today is special because I am starting a new series called Car Key's favorite games of all time. So what's this series about, Karkimo? Well, as you can clearly see, it's a game review. But not only that, it's my personal experience with the games. And let's start with Pitfall with an exclamation point. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. Well, Harry and I just grabbed the van, swung through the trees, and over the tar pits and found the jungle treasure. It was really neat. If you haven't met Pitfall Harry, you're missing the year's most incredible video game adventure. Pitfall for the Atari 2600 and in television. Since I met Pitfall Harry, no other man will do. Pitfall, designed by David Crane for Activision. And if you don't know, this game came out in 1982. And that's very appropriate because The Forger of Pain was born in 1982. But I didn't just pick out this game because of the year, no. This was the first game in my life that I ever fell in love with. Pitfall was a gift by my late dad, Alvaro Rodriguez, in 1986. I was four years old and I just loved this game. This game also came out in other consoles like the MSX, the ColecoVision, and the Apple II. But I got the 2600 one. The game was developed by a guy named David Crane in Activision. Yes, those same Activision that make Call of Duty every frigging year. Back in the day, Activision were the sugar daddies of gaming. You could say they ruled the landscape. 1981 was a year of explosive growth for the video game industry as a whole, and for one company in particular, Activision, bringing you the most creative and original home video games with extraordinary graphics, exciting sound, and incredibly realistic action. Just what you've come to expect from Activision. Then after the crash of 83, they were kind of silent in the Nintendo years. But you know, that's another story for another day. Just look at the box. Right off the bat with the box art, it tells you and gives you an idea of what the game's about. And uh, trust me, it helps because for the most part in Atari games in those days, you had to use your imagination. Imagination. The first time I started playing, my four-year-old brain had no idea what to do. And it's been 33 years, and I still don't know what to do. Okay, I'll get to that in a few moments. Great Scott! The legends were true. Emmanuel, it's been so years since I've seen a paper thingy. After you read the manual, is that you really found out that the name of the protagonist is Pitfall Harry. The graphics were groundbreaking at the time. And I'm not gonna lie, they still look pretty good. They have aged spectacularly. Especially the animation for Pitfall Harry. It was standard most games for the quote-unquote protagonist to move from left to right without actually moving in an animated sort of way. The sound was actually kind of the first human sounds. And the guy went like, dun, 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 dun. but it actually resembled Tarzan's, you know, the, oh! Yeah, I know, 
Just like that, right? Getting back to the gameplay. After a bajillion years, I've learned, thanks to the power of the internets, that this is one of the few games from that era that you could actually beat. Easier said than done. You're supposed to find 32 treasures in a 20 minute time limit. Dude, I am a veteran gamer and I still can't beat this game. Besides, a kid in the 80s would have no idea how to get to the treasures. It's 2020 and I had to go online for a walkthrough just to attempt, attempt beating this game. You have to get to the treasures before the timer runs out. And by God, it's really hard. The time is pretty strict. I kid you not, you cannot screw up even once. If you do, you might as well just reset the game. Your run has to be flawless. Just when you're kind of close of beating Pitfall, you feel the tension. You have three lives, but you have to make every single jump count. I got so nervous that I would eventually screw up and get a game over. <sighs> it's been over 30 years and I still can't beat Pitfall. If you're interested in playing this game, there are a lot of ways to get it via the Activision Anthology Collection for many retro consoles and heck, even from the App Store for all you smartphone users. Do I recommend this? Definitely. It loses its fun factor pretty quick, but it's not a bad game by any means. My objective with this video is to share with you games that had a huge impact in my life and in the gaming world. Now tell me in the comments what other Atari review do you want to see? And I have a question for you guys. You know